Alright, so today is Foundation Friday. I filmed a video on this makeup look this morning, which is already up, so I'll link it in the eye and down below. Normally when I film two videos in one day, I'll film it just like back to back. And today I took a break and ate some Indian food and now it's like three hours later. So moral of the story, I feel very out of it right now. Not in my normal groove. The sun's like going down and it feels like it's been like two days in one today. <laughs> it's one of those days. But for today's Foundation Friday, I'm gonna be answering your specific foundation related questions. So I've done one of these in the past and it's basically where you guys submit questions on Instagram and I answer them. Anything you've ever wanted to know about anything base related, whether it's just like a general question or specific to me, specific to you, whatever it is, we're gonna answer it today. So I hope these videos are helpful. If you enjoy while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. I have a Foundation Friday playlist linked down below in the description box. All right, let's get into it. I feel like I need an afternoon coffee, but it's not even the afternoon anymore. When is too late for an afternoon coffee? Okay, so first question, Ashley says, what foundation would you suggest for a bride? So I have a whole bridal foundations video, whether you're attending wedding or you are the bride, I have a whole video on foundations that I recommend for that situation. However, I think that was a year ago or so now, somewhere around there. And I definitely have a couple others that I would also add on to that list. I still recommend all the foundations that I talked about in that video, but while we're here and on the topic, I'm gonna suggest a couple others for you too. So the first one is the more affordable of the options. However, the shade range is not great because it is a Korean product. So just keeping that in mind. So this is the Etude House Double Lasting Foundation. But this one I would recommend because the finish is Unreal, it looks like skin, it has a beautiful satin finish, but it's very long lasting. The only thing is this one does have SPF 34. I don't think I've actually tried a flash test with this one. So if you are the bride yourself and you're gonna be doing a bunch of flash photography, keep that in mind. This is only about 13 bucks, even less. I think you can get it on YesStyle, but if you have a deadline, like for your wedding, order in advance to test out because it does take a while to ship from YesStyle, just FYI. And then the other one is definitely pricier. If you, you know, have it in your budget and you're willing to splurge for your wedding day or you're able to, this is beautiful. It's definitely not as much coverage as the Etude House. This is more of like a natural looking foundation, but this is the Guerlain Natural Glow Essential Wear Foundation. The reason why I would suggest this one for your wedding day is because it is, again, very long lasting. It just holds up well. It looks the same throughout the day, at least on my skin. I have a whole review video on this one. This one is a more recent find and I've just been loving it. This is totally not a requirement of this, but also just keeping in mind, if you are gonna be like photographing your vanity as you're getting ready and stuff on your wedding day, this would also look really pretty sitting on there. Just saying, it's a bonus. This is very glowy, so I would say this one only go for if you want a very glowy, natural looking, lighter coverage kind of foundation. This one is more satin, satin matte, fuller coverage, like total different looks here. If you're a bride who wants sheer coverage on your wedding day, like maybe you have a lot of freckles or you just don't like wearing makeup, but you want like a little something, MAC Face and Body. But definitely do check out the bridal foundation video because there's tons of other options in that video. My foundation always gets cakey around my nose, help. Okay, so you guys know I also get creasing and kind of, I don't get as much cakiness around my nose, but I definitely get just creasing because I have lines right here and this kind of, you know, a similar kind of thing where depending on your face, there might just be areas where you're gonna get kind of more creasing and more cakiness. However, there are certain things that you can do to kind of minimize it. One thing is use less product in those areas and just be kind of conscious when you're applying your foundation that you are using a lighter hand in those areas. So if you know that you get cakiness and creasing around your nose, maybe use a sponge and use just the slightest amount in those areas where you do get heavier looking. Powder is one of those things that it just depends on your skin, but maybe if you're someone who has always used powder, try not using powder. Sometimes powder can make you look super cakey. The other thing is it can just be the products that you're using. Something I've learned from just testing so many products over the years is that it really is just a combination of product application and then products in combination with each other. So it's really hard to narrow down. Like I can't just tell you use a primer and that's going to solve all of your issues because it might be a primer the way that you're applying it and then your actual foundation that you're using or it could just be your foundation or it could be that you're using too much foundation. You know what I mean? So just kind of keep in mind all of those things in one. Each day you do your makeup, try and just apply it in a different way. That's usually what I do is every time I do my makeup, I just try different kind of techniques, whether it's 
mixing products or using, you know, less of a certain foundation, using more of a certain foundation, applying it in a different way, just kind of tweaking it each time to see if it looks better or worse. Amber says foundation looks like it's sitting on top and not melted into skin. It could kind of be a combo of things. First thing I think of is it's the foundation, but also setting spray. Some foundations look like that until you spray setting spray and then it kind of melts it all together. MAC Fix Plus, if you haven't tried it, tends to do the job with that. It just has this way of kind of melting all of your makeup together and making it look more like your skin rather than a bunch of products just sitting on top of each other. A couple really nice skin-like foundations just off the top of my head, Estee Lauder Futurist, Peri Para Ink Foundation, Etude House Double Lasting, if you use a lighter hand with it, Purito BB Cream I've been talking about, but definitely setting spray. I always say how setting spray, even if it doesn't necessarily make your makeup last 5 million hours and do revolutionary things for making your makeup stay on longer. I personally noticed such a difference with setting spray just with the finish of my makeup and kind of melting everything together and making it look less makeup-y on my skin. By the way, if you saw this first impression video that I filmed in the same day that I'm filming this video, I was testing a new foundation. It's the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. That's what I'm wearing right now. I have thoughts. I'm going to be having a whole other foundation Friday coming on this foundation, so uh, don't judge my foundation based on this video. That's what I'm trying to say. Jackie says, how to apply during the day without looking cakey. Okay, so some people, at least from like what I've seen on YouTube watching other people's videos, some people can reapply throughout the day and it looks like they haven't added any extra product, like they can powder throughout the day and it doesn't add any extra texture. I'm not one of those people, when I had oily skin, that was one of the reasons why I wouldn't like to reapply because if I added any extra product throughout the day, it would just make it look worse. So personally, just with my skin type, I've never been big on reapplying makeup throughout the day just because of how it looks on my skin. If I'm gonna do it, I only do it if I haven't powdered my face. If I powder my face and then I try to reapply, it's a hot mess even if I try to just reapply powder or touch up powder, it never looks great. I actually have been a little bit more lately just because of the mask situation and it's been working well if I don't powder. So for example, if I'm wearing a liquid foundation, don't powder my face at all, like maybe just under my eyes or whatever, and then put on a mask, come back, and I have like a little bit of transfer and rub off on my nose, then I'll go in and touch it up with a sponge or whatever, just with liquid foundation. And that seems to work fine because I'm just putting liquid on top of a liquid. And then to prevent it from looking cakey, you can always add more setting spray over top and kind of, again, melt everything back together. But I don't know. I think some people can just get away with powdering throughout the day and kind of touching up and it not adding extra heaviness. And then some people just kind of like emphasize all the texture. So it might just be a person by person kind of thing. Okay, so a common question was about tinted moisturizers. What's my favorite tinted moisturizer? What's the tinted moisturizer that will last all day? This person says I have combination skin. Tinted moisturizers, I'm always wondering what people are going for with that. Do they just want something that's like quick to put on and lightweight and light coverage? Do you care about SPF? Like what are your primary things that you want out of a tinted moisturizer? Because sometimes there are certain foundations or BB creams even that are basically like tinted moisturizers that I actually like better than a lot of tinted moisturizers, but that are essentially the same thing as a lot of tinted moisturizers. So with that said, I'm going to tell you things that are similar to tinted moisturizers. The Purito BB cream has SPF 38. I've talked a lot about this recently. It was in a current foundation routine video, current favorites video, but I just love this because you can super customize it. You can wear it sheer, you can wear it completely full coverage. If you have combo skin and you want something to last all day and you want sheer to light coverage, MAC face and body all the way. I do really like the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer SPF 30, but honestly, I think you could just go with the L'Oreal Radiant Serum Foundation. This has SPF 50, very similar, super glowy. So those are a few, but if you do have combo or oily skin, I think this one is definitely the longest lasting. There are a few questions about dearly beloved, rest in peace. CYO 101. This person says, have you found a dupe for CYO 101? It was the perfect shade slash formula for me. I haven't found a perfect dupe. I I know the Kick-Ass, the Soap and Glory Kick-Ass that I did the review for is supposed to be like a perfect dupe, has the same, you know, formula and everything. There's something about it. I don't know. I just don't feel like it's the exact, exact same formula. Sadly, no, I have not. I have still like 10 bottles of CYO on backup. I'm not wearing it a whole lot because I'm testing other foundations for videos and stuff, but I am forever on the hunt for a CYO life proof dupe. What are the odds that I finally found like the perfect foundation? 
after how many years on YouTube? Eight years. And it's it's forever gone. Dear says, any tips to reduce transfer while wearing masks? So I did a video that talked about a few tips that I have for creating like a transfer-proof kind of routine. I'll link that video in the eye and down below. Allison says, best sunscreen that doesn't affect foundation application slash wear. I definitely feel like I can finally recommend one SPF no matter what your skin type is, no matter what finish are you like, whatever it is, Purito, Unscented, the Centella, I'll have a link down below. That one is just an all around great SPF that's not greasy. Mentioned it in my recent favorites video. It's not greasy, it's not too dewy. We've worn it for a couple months now, haven't had any weird things with foundation over top of it. So I just think it's an all around great one. You can get it for around 13 bucks. Ooh, this is a fun question. Favorite drugstore foundation combination, mix of two foundations. One of my go-to drugstore foundations that I like to mix is Flower Beauty Light Illusion. Usually the only reason why I like to mix that one is because the shade is a little bit too yellow. Sometimes I like a little bit more coverage in that one, but it has such a pretty dewy plumping kind of finish and probably L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear. Probably just mixing those two like with other things in general. Really like adding that one to make things more dewy and then I like adding this one because this is super long wearing on my skin. It has a really nice satin matte but not too matte finish and this one mixes really well with other foundations. So for example with this one another drugstore combo I would mix it with like Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth because that one's not super long lasting on its own but it's very dewy and I like the finish of that one so if I want to make this one more dewy I could mix those two together. What was your absolute favorite foundation for oily skin that lasts all day? Talked so much today that my my throat's just deciding to stop working. If any of you are newer to my channel a few years ago I had, well not a few years ago, my entire life I had oily skin and acne and then a few years ago I went on Accutane, cleared that situation up and then had dry skin. Now my skin is normal basically right now, normal slash kind of dry. So for years I had oily skin and I would say my favorite foundation that really controlled my oil and just looked lovely on my skin over my acne, over my texture was probably the Too Faced Peach Perfect. And it wasn't full coverage or anything. I would say it's like a medium coverage foundation. Check out that review video. You can see how it wore on my skin, but it's transfer proof. So great one for right now because of mass and everything. Okay, this is a good question. How do you reduce the slick feeling and dewy foundation without losing the glow? So I actually have a video on that where I go through a glowy foundation routine that actually has a powder finish. Actually, was that the same video that had, was the transfer proof one? I think it was. But basically you can work in layers. So you could actually go in with a matte foundation and still end up with a very glowy end result if you layer the glowy product. So you could use a super glowy primer, a super glowy moisturizer, go in with a matte foundation and then use a glowy setting spray, use a glowy powder. You can to the touch have a powder finish but have the appearance of a glow. What is the foundation you think is the most universally flattering? I've said this in the past, I think I said it in that bridal foundation video, but probably the Derma Blend Smooth Liquid Camo. It's one of those foundations that tends to work on a lot of different people, a lot of different skin types. It has the most beautiful lightweight satin finish. It looks like skin, it's comfortable, it's long wearing. It's pretty freaking beautiful and I feel like it's one of the most underrated foundations. Do you still use the Dermacol makeup cover? No, that shade is actually way too light for me now that I used to always swatch. That was a few years ago. My skin has definitely changed. My skin tone has gotten a couple shades darker than it was a few years ago for whatever reason. Does that happen to anyone else? No, I don't use it, not just because of the shade, but I don't usually wear, especially on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't usually use that full of coverage anymore. I usually go for kind of more like medium coverage now, I would say, which is so polar opposite of a few years ago. I was like, I either want full coverage or nothing at all. And now, you know, I do appreciate a good medium coverage foundation here and there. I'm torn between the ColourPop foundation, the new one, and the Uma Beauty foundation. Which one? This is a good moment to update on the Uma Beauty foundation. In the Uma Beauty review, I talked about how the different shades had different formulas. I returned the shade that I got because it was way too dark. Got a different one with a purple top. And let me just tell you, the purple top is a completely different formula than the blue top. Like it seems like a completely different foundation. I definitely much prefer the blue top formula. So now I almost want to get the blue top formula again and either just use like a mixer with it. This shade situation I got all mixed up on. So I don't know if I actually can find the blue top formula in a shade that matches me, but if I can, I'm gonna reorder the blue top one. The only formula that I have tried that I liked of the Uma Beauty one is the blue top. So if you can get the blue top <laughs> in your shade, that is what I'm recommending. Like I said in that video, it's hard to recommend that foundation for that reason because 
each shade has a different formula. But I think overall going off of the blue formula, I like the blue Uma better than the ColourPop. Rebecca says, what are your favorite foundation brushes? I can't find any that I like. I got you. Sigma F80 is my all time favorite. Flat top Kabuki brush. They last for forever. They have warranty on them if they break or whatever. Great quality. My favorite. Elf Ultimate Blending Brush, my other favorite. And then Elf Powder Blurring Brush. Both of these are also great. And then I can't seem to find mine right now, but the Sigma F82, which is just the round kabuki. I like that one for stick foundations or any kind of like thicker foundations. Okay, we're gonna end it on this nice question. How old is your oldest foundation? Oh God. So I recently, like last year, I don't know how long ago, did a foundation declutter video that I filmed where I think I tossed like most of the super old ones, but sometimes I like to keep foundations just to like mention in a video, you know, not necessarily put it on my face, but just to hold up. You know, I may have one somewhere that's like 10 years old. I'm not putting it on my face, but it might be in there. It's a collector's item, but we're gonna end it off there. I hope you guys enjoyed today's Foundation Friday. Again, if you wanna know the makeup look that I'm wearing right now, I'll have that video linked down below in the description box. You can go check it out. Let me know if you guys wanna see another one of these. If you wanna participate in the question asking, make sure you're following me on Instagram. It's at Taylor Wynn. I also do basically monthly giveaways over on there of makeup and beauty products and stuff. So if you ever wanna enter, it's over on my Instagram. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.